Hello there. In this video, I'm going to be talking through three sections from chapter seven rather quickly. Uh, originally, I made some of these videos thinking we'd be going at our normal pace. Obviously, things are a little bit different. So in some of these chapters, there are facts that I want you to know, but we're not going to go through every single detail. So I will have some videos where I want to just emphasize what are the things that you want to get out of this, even though we don't have time to go through all of the smaller features. So chapter seven is mostly about inequalities, comparing things as bigger or smaller in the context of geometric diagrams. And just as an example of what we're talking about, suppose I draw triangle ABC where AB is smaller than BC. So maybe my triangle looks something like so and create point D on the line AC, where C is between A and D. So I'll move this out of the way. And the idea is we're going to keep this line going. So D is somewhere out here on the same line, but past C. C is between A and D. So there are things that we can start to compare. I can look at angle A versus angle B. Or I could look at angle B versus angle BCD. And maybe it's hard to tell for sure in this. Oh, actually, sorry, there's a typo here. Um, let's, I don't want to compare angles A and B. Well, well, really, I probably want to compare angle C. So I take that back. Let's compare angle C. To angle B. And we'll compare angle BCD to angle B. So really, I, I, I apologize. I really shouldn't call that angle C. I should call it angle ACB. So what you'll probably notice here is that the measure of angle ACB is smaller than the measure of angle B. And that appears to be smaller than the measure of angle BCD. And what I'll tell you is even if you drew this differently with a different shaped triangle, as long as you start with this relationship that AB is longer than BC and that AC and D are all on the same line like this, you'll always get this. So we've had various theorems that talk about things being congruent to each other. When do we know they're the same? Well, it turns out there are going to be some important rules about when we know something is bigger than something else. Now, a lot of the details we're not going to go through. Uh, we will have a little bit of just a change in notation. So if I write that a segment AB is smaller than a segment CD, what that means is that the lengths are smaller. And similarly, if I say an angle is smaller than another angle, what that means is that the measure is smaller. This is just a convenient way of extending our notation. It doesn't really change anything. Uh, we have some review of things you saw before. I'm going to skip this. But a theorem that'll come in really handy, this is one of these theorems that's very obvious, but it's nice to have a name for it. It's called the parts theorem. And basically the gist of the parts theorem is it says a part is smaller than the whole. And it says that in the context of distances and in the context of angles. So for part one, it says if D is a point of the segment AB, between A and B. So here's A, here's B, here's D. Then segment AB is bigger than segment AD, and segment AB is bigger than segment DB. Just looking at the diagram, yeah, this whole segment AB is bigger than segment AD, and it's bigger than segment DB. Similarly, if I have an angle ABC,
and I take some point D in its interior, I could look at different angles. I could look at angle ABC. I could look at angle ABD. And I could look at angle DBC. And what this says is that the big angle, the whole angle ABC, is bigger than either one of those parts. So occasionally in a theorem or to explain something, you might need to use why is it that a part is smaller than the whole? The name of that is the parts theorem. And if you like, think about how to prove this. These are not that hard to prove. If you remember some facts about parts and wholes and can use inequalities, but I'm not going to stress that. I'm not going to be proving all of the little things that we do in this chapter. I want you to just understand some of the key facts. And with that in mind, we'll go straight forward to section 7.3, where we're going to learn an th important theorem called the exterior angle theorem. So first, here's a definition. Let's have, suppose I have triangle ABC. And C is between A and D. So the idea is we're going to extend one side of this. Extend like so. And then maybe D is out here. We've created an angle right here, angle BCD. That's not one of the angles of the triangle. Right. This one with the dot, angle ACB, is what's called an interior angle. When we think of angles of a triangle, that's what they are. They're the interior angles. An exterior angle is like what I have here. And it doesn't mean any angle that's just kind of sort of outside the triangle. It means something very specific. It's an angle like this. So one way you can think of this is that an exterior angle is in a linear pair with one of the triangle's interior angles. So it's not just, so like something like so. It's not vertical either, right? This one here. This is not an exterior angle. Exterior angles are in linear pairs with interior angles. It means something much more specific than outside. Learn this word. A lot of people don't like to learn words. They like to make stuff up. But I urge you to learn exactly what this means. It doesn't just mean outside. It means outside in a very specific way. So as a little exercise to make sure you understand this, draw a triangle and count how many exterior angles it would have. So hit pause if you need to. I'll reveal the answer in just a moment. So what we can do is at every vertex, we can extend the sides a little bit. So right here, this one, angle 1, is an exterior angle, as is this one, angle 2. They're both in linear pairs with that thing I've marked with a dot. I could extend my sides up here. This is an interior angle. Angles 3 and 4 are exterior angles. Over here I have an interior angle. Extend this side extend this side. I've created new angles. Here is angle 5, here is angle 6. So there are six, two at each vertex. Okay, this definition is very wordy, but once you see the picture, it makes a lot of sense. So consider triangle ABC. with C between B and E, so that means 
we get E by going out in this direction. C is between B and E. And C is between A and D. So if I go out like this, oops, that's not right. If I go out like this, D would be out here somewhere. So, angles A and B are called the remote interior angles of the exterior angles B, C, D, and angle A, C, E. So here's the idea. These two are congruent to each other because they're vertical. So these two in green are exterior angles. And they're exterior angles because they're in a linear pair with an interior angle. So what we can kind of think here is that this angle right here is the nearby interior angle. But a triangle has three interior angles. So from the perspective of this exterior angle, these two over here are interior angles that are not close by. So we call them remote interior angles. So a remote interior angle just means an interior angle that is not right next to what you're thinking about. And it's a question of perspective. If I am focusing on this exterior angle, then these two are the remote interior angles. So it's always a question of perspective. There's in, an, in a vacuum, there's no such thing as saying, oh, that is a remote interior angle. It's only remote compared to something else. And here's what the exterior angle theorem says. An exterior angle of a triangle is greater than each of its remote interior angles. So if I draw a triangle, like so, and I create an exterior angle like so. Angle one is bigger than either of its remote interior angles. So it's bigger than angle two and it's bigger than angle three. Remember, we're allowed to leave out the measures and just say the angle is bigger. From the point of view of that exterior angle, two and three are the remote interior angles. But I could do this in other ways. I could extend this like so. Pretty good. And here's angle four. And here's angle five. From the point of view of angle four, the remote interior angles are over here. They're three and five. So angle four is bigger than angle three, and angle four is bigger than angle five. And I could do the same thing with one over here. So wherever you're looking, the exterior angle at that corner is bigger than the interior angles at the other corners. And this might not feel all that interesting, but it turns out it's a really important tool for proving other things. I'm not going to give an explanation in this video. If you're curious, you can watch one of the other videos where I spell it out. But that's the end of this abbreviated version.